9 o'clock, and so uh, I'm going to make some comments to the small group that's here. Uh, this is the PPI open forum, and, and um, you never know what to expect in an open forum. But uh, the PPI, which is the – and my name is Larry Davenport. I'm the chair of the uh, PPC, the Program Policy Committee. And next to me is Tom Rudebach, and Tom is the – uh, erstwhile panelists today, but you're also, what, what's your other blue ribbon there? Say, committee chairman of the mainstream, correct? Right. So uh, we represent uh, uh, one of the program uh, committees and the uh, umbrella, if you will, committee of the program policy. Several years ago, um, trying to acknowledge what we all know, that, that we have some dwindling numbers. Um, so with that being said, noting that there's, there's a small but hearty number of people here in the room, um, there are several things we could talk about today uh, just to get some ideas. And it's, it's, it's you folks here rather than Tom and myself making speeches. But I think it's worthwhile since we have a small group of people to try to get some understanding of what we as a group uh, understand the PPI to be and not to be. If, if there's anybody here uh, representing something that has just uh, garnered you 5,000 dancers in your area, I want you to go first. Uh, <laughs> I didn't see any hands go in the air. Um, but it, it's, it's open for questions you have, but I think I'd like to open it up first to just, uh, uh, did anybody actually, uh, who, who gets American Square Dance in here? And back in November, uh, Mike Seastrom had asked me to write a, a, an article about the program policy initiative. Has anybody besides me ever read this thing? Two people, great. So I'm, I'm just curious to, uh, but it, I won't. I'm not here to read this thing. But uh, the basic premise was is that in competition, competition for people's recreation time, we're, we're facing obstacles. Uh, as a result, recruiting is difficult. Uh, dance population is aging, and we are experiencing dwindling numbers. Would anybody debate that, or would everybody pretty much agree that that's that's where we are? So as a result of a few other things that Color Lab has tried, but Color Lab did put in through the PPC a program called the Program Policy Initiative. And the idea behind it was simply one to say to people in the activity both within Color Lab and outside of Color Lab that experiment is good, try something different is good, that Color Lab is, is not what is, I think, traditionally perceived as only interested in the established programs, and you're either running the established programs and you're on the inside, or you're not running the established programs on, your, on the outside. But this is really to try to change the thinking throughout this organization, throughout the Square Dance world, that if you've got an idea, try it. Now, the one thing about ideas that you try it, if you don't tell anybody about it, people won't know whether it's successful or whether it didn't work as well as you wanted to, but it led to some ideas of how you might might do something else that was successful. So at this point, uh, we saw in the board, uh, some of us here are on the Board of Governors, we saw some data in the board of a, of a survey that suggested maybe – uh, of the survey respondents, maybe about 70% of the people out there at least could raise their hand and say, I know what the PPI is or I've heard of the PPI. 30% or so uh, didn't have a clue what the PPI is. And so one of the things is is that this is a long-term project in the sense of get people to sort of begin to slowly understand. Well, that really is nasty, isn't it? Um, to get people to understand uh, that experimentation within Caller Lab, communication within Caller Lab, dissemination of these ideas through Caller Lab uh, is a good thing. The other thing that to try to get people to understand is it's not the business of Caller Lab here to put judgment on your idea or to pre-clear your idea or tell you it's okay to try it or not. Caller Lab in this particular instance is simply there, those of us who are interested in following this thing, is simply there to be a a almost a clearinghouse for the communication of your ideas, but we're not going to tell you what to try or not what not to try. So with that being said, I'm curious how much, how well that matches up with anybody's understanding currently of what the PPI is, or if you had a different understanding uh, with Cal having the microphone, uh, what do you think it is and what do you think is valuable about this exercise? Don't all jump in at once. Thank you, Bob. Cal didn't turn it on for you. 
two buttons. Um, first of all, I would say that my feel is, oh, thank you. I am Bob Riggs from Colorado. Um, my feel is that when I talk to people, there are some that understand what it is. There are some that are actually doing something, and there's a very small number that we actually hear about. So I think your comments about, I think there are a fair number doing some things and being inventive and being creative and trying things, but when it comes to the next step of, of actually letting other people know about it, as you referred to it, I think that's the part that's probably falling falling down at this point. My feel is, as I said, there are a lot of people who are thinking or trying to think creatively about how can I get how can I build my business if nothing else? And and it could be as simple as how I build my business. Do you have a sense or anybody else have a sense in the room of how we can increase the uh, awareness that communication is good? Well, Cal's walking back there and what Bob just said is, is is very, very true. I was for several years I was chairman of the RPM committee. And when at that point we were working on the Winning Ways program, and in fact they still are, that is on the website. But back at that point, I had a couple people that were feeding me information of, of success stories that were going on. But the only way I got anything was to personally contact them and give them a, an outline of what I wanted. And then many times I had to end up taking their bits and pieces and putting together in a, in a written format. Yes, uh, my name is Jimmy Aiken. I'm from San Diego. And it seems to me that one of the best things you could do to increase communication is change the name of the PPI. Um, I understand that PPI stands for Program Policy Initiative. Yeah, yeah I, I, I see your point. It could be considered rather vague. Yeah. What are your suggestions? <laughs> well, if, if you're encouraging people to experiment with programs, call it the Experimental Program Initiative or the Program Experiment Initiative. Um, if uh, it more clearly communicate what the purpose of it is. Also, uh, getting significant placement on the Caller Lab website uh, and in direction would be useful to help introduce it to people. And then in terms of getting feedback, you just mentioned that uh, one of the best or most successful times that you've had feedback was when you contacted people. So contact people. Um, either use Caller Lab's email list to send out a query to people telling them we want your feedback or directing them to a web form where they can leave their feedback. Use a paper mail uh, system if you have the money or if you have a more refined list of just the people who you know are experimenting, do an annual paper mail to them and say what, what's the kind of program you're using, what are the, uh, what's the success you're having. And uh, and take the initiative to talk to folks to uh, bring in more feedback. Then you need someone to collate it and publish the results. But uh, it seems like those would be logical avenues to pursue. All very good ideas. Anybody else have any comments along those lines? Uh, name name. My name is Reinhold Rodig, and I live outside of Cleveland, Ohio. Is that, is that an Ohio accent? Is that, is that what uh, that's mean? a genuine Ohio accent that is very rare, nearly extinct. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You caught me. <laughs> uh, as far as the name of the thing goes, and the name is very important, like a logo sort of, I was thinking more of, or I just had the idea of thinking of outreach, unless this... Uh, term is already taken by something else because what it means is reaching outside of the established uh, square dance community to get people interested just in dancing to music while and at the same time exercising their brain and uh, encouraging various methods of uh, uh, getting people interested in this activity. Great, thank you. Another comment. A couple of hands in the air. Okay, Bob is first, I agree. All right. <laughs> we'll draw straws. Um, I had two comments. One, I think the naming, coming up with a good name, I think is a better name than PPI is, is an excellent thought. 
Yeah, we can talk about that this afternoon in the PPC. Okay. The second, <laughs> what's that? <laughs> it's these PP. Uh, um, w- the thought I had was when we look at things that have been, that we've heard about, um, Ron and Counts and, and Kit Galvin did something in Colorado Springs. They got a program running and there's, they've cre- even created a DVD and so on. I have no idea whether that got reported back here. Dennis O'Neill did something up in the mountains in a club up there. I don't know whether that got reported. Um, and that's working in a number of ways. There are the big things, which I think those two are sort of the big things. And then there are the little things, which are another out of the box kind of, of thinking kind of concept. And the little things are a different way of letting groups know about your upcoming class or, or for a standard traditional structure, but maybe a different marketing technique to get to that structure. That's still part of the initiative in a way and going beyond it to the really truly different kinds of things as well as far as different programs are concerned. It, it, it's a muddiness that right. I'm referring to. Yeah, and, and a follow-on to what you just said, Bob, I mean, uh, the comments, and Don will be next, but the comments of we can uh, proactively through email, whatever, ask people, yeah, almost in the, our own survey, that's an idea. Uh, if we get names fed to us like you were just feeding several names, then we can do the personal contact through that sense. And then in the clearinghouse sense, what I'm getting out of what you said is is that there may be another committee within Caller Lab to pass it along to for follow-up because it's a marketing idea or it's something for the newly formed uh, uh, teaching methods uh, that Vernon's got going or, or somewhere else, or maybe it doesn't have a home, in which case uh, you know, we have to figure that out. But I think that's some really good stuff. Don. Uh, Don Thompson, Paradise, California. I don't want to beat the uh, the naming thing to death, but using the word program in a effort agenda is tough because we have a mainstream program and we have a plus program and we have advanced program. The word program is everywhere. So using the word program for this makes it, Know, tougher. And, I, and, and I think that's a great suggestion. Could I mean, be how did it get its name? Well, it, it's an idea that came out of the program policy committee, so it became known as the program policy initiative. But yeah, from a marketing point of view, you're right. Not a lot of thought went into it. And then the next thing, if you'd like to get more involvement, I think, unfortunately, callers are probably not different than anybody else. You need to beat them over the head with it. Um, at each meal, uh, orientation session, whatever, during the convention, start hitting on that this is vital. We need this interaction. We need this uh, uh, cross-pollination. So this is something to be involved in, really important. Uh, I think you may, may get more, uh, more involvement that way. Uh, you know, a chat group and all that, ah, we're busy, right? It's, are people going to... Take the time. Remember to take the time to make contributions. Eh, I don't know. You know, might have diminishing returns. I unfortunately, at this point, am getting ready to start personally a lot of other things, so I don't have anything to contribute. But I'm looking forward to maybe having something next year. But I, for one, and I'm sure there's more, are really hungry for just craving input for my own efforts to grow the business, grow the activity do the recruiting, all that stuff. Great. Other comments, other thoughts? This is an open forum. Cal, you had your hand in the air. You got the microphone. One of the, Calvin Campbell, uh, Colorado, one of the things that I have noticed being on the ABC uh, discussion is the reluctance of people to talk. I'm sure there's got to be a lot out there, but they basically don't want to talk about it. I don't know why they don't want to talk about it. I have also found that uh, you can also you can get information out of them by getting on the telephone, as you point out, but you cannot get them to write it up. You know that's been my experience. I say, well, gee whiz, would you send me a written description of what you're doing? And I never get any. Oh yeah, I can do that, but I never get anything. And so this becomes, you know, give me details as you want but I never get details. You know, I want to know what they're using, what basically they do, how they market it. 
What are they going out and doing? All this sort of stuff. How do you get halls? One of the big issues in Denver is how do you get a hall? The recreation departments won't talk to you. The churches are too expensive, and the schools wouldn't even let you in in the first place. So how do you get a hall to even start? This sort of thing. You know, I'm looking for the nitty-gritty of how you got it going. And yet trying to do this seems to be an impossible task as far as for ideas at work. Yeah, back of the hall, Pam. Cam class for Toronto. Just listening to Cal, something just occurred to me just a second. Would it make sense if we had, in a sense, a little form? And when you hear that somebody's doing something or you know of somebody, like, I mean, I have actually asked people to send something in and they have. I've, I've been lucky, I guess. Maybe not in the detail that you want. But if we have a little a form they could fill out rather than just say, oh, write me something. I mean, I know a lot of people, I mean, I stare at a blank piece of paper and it drives me nuts. I don't know what to put on it. But if you give them a little form with, like, how did you get the hall? How did you promote this? How did you advertise? Little details that we want. Yeah. Would that would that help? It's just like it, I said, it, it just occurred to me the second as, as Kyle was It talking. might help in a couple of ways. In that article I was referring to earlier, what I put in it said, uh, you can submit your idea before you get started, after you get started, after you're finished, doesn't matter. Your fo- report or on a form should include basic what did you do, how many people were in it, uh, what was the timeline you followed? Was it a success? So, I mean, we have the outlines of what a form be, but as I'm thinking of this and I'm thinking some of some other things, if these are the people that won't even send, fill out a simple form, then if you find out who you want to talk to, get the name, and we have some volunteers, you can effectively do the interview over the phone, and the, your volunteer, in effect, fills out the form for them through a conversation. That may be one of the things that breaks the ice. That, that's basically what I did on the winning ways, although I did most of it by Internet. I had a – lame just left me. It fell up in Wisconsin. It used to have that uh, newsletter, leadership newsletter. Anyhow, he was getting stories fed to him from many sources, and, and we, we got on a good rapport, and I never did meet the man person to person. But he would – if he got a good story coming in, he'd feed it to me. And then I, I just had a, a form that I basically did over the Internet, a bunch of questions I asked. And when they, those people fed me the information, then I kind of put it together in a in a, a readable-type paragraph or paragraphs, whatever, depending on what they fed me. So let me, let me throw out this idea so you get some more conversation. Um, this was initially started as a thought that came out of the PPC committee, the Program Policy Committee. Uh, following up on the types of things we're talking about, um, generally, um, given who the membership of the Program Policy Committee is, and the membership of the Program Policy Committee is essentially uh, a chair, vice chair, and the vice chair and chair of the individual program committees. So their focus is different than, than following up on this particular initiative. And so I'm thinking that with a new name, with some new ideas of how we outreach, of how we interview, how we get information back, it may be the, uh, that we need to have a discussion of is there an existing committee within Color Lab to take this on as a project, or does it deserve its own uh, committee? I say that lightly because, you know, you always worry about too many committees. But anyway, to put together the people that can actually follow this up. I see a hand going up in the air. That's exactly what I was trying to get, a hand, another hand in the air. Actually, it would have gone up anyway because uh, you just led directly to my next question, which was what specifically is the initiative intended to cover? We've talked about programs. We've talked about getting halls. We've talked about marketing and outreach. And I'm, it, I'm, I'm a newbie, so I could be mistaken, but it seems like some of that's already under the purview of some other committees. What's distinctive about the PPI and to what extent are the things that it's doing covered by other committees? Um, I think that raises some really good points. Um, I think a lot of the – first of all, I envision that however this effort continues to get some life to it, it's a clearinghouse of how do we outreach and get information from what people are individually doing, uh, collectively doing to help grow the business, anything under that scope. And then if, if what the information comes in is as if it belongs with this committee or this committee or this committee because it's marketing or it's methods or it's something else, 
I think that you can then pass that information to those committees for their consideration. You can certainly communicate through winning ways, those things that come through, and then that group of indiv- – those things that don't fit, try to figure out where they need a home. Okay. Is there anything that clearly doesn't fit at the moment, something that this committee would hang on to and deal with? Got a hand in the air. I, I'm, I'm looking for audience audience thoughts on that. Well, <clears throat> Don Thompson again. Uh, I think a good place to start would be to have Tom delineate the difference between this group or this effort and the winning ways. It sounds like there's some parallelism there. <laughs> um, my thought here was there are things that this initiative would lend itself to other committees, but one of the one of the interesting things that I find as I talk to callers is is that they don't perceive dances as productions. They don't perceive them as an event production. And one of the things that is not really I have a committee, it, another committee that's handling it is what I call the the dance production kind of concept. We have what's in a dance. We have teaching methods. We have uh, programs that address the content of that. But as far as, as how you produce an event from beginning to end, there really isn't a committee that covers that. Does that make sense to anybody? I think of every every date on the calendar, every time from the time I leave home until I get back home as a production. And what's in between is a series of events, a choreographed evening. And I don't think we as an activity do a good enough job of choreographing our evenings, so to speak. We choreograph our dances, but we don't choreograph our evenings, our productions. And what the PPI is doing is encouraging some variability in those productions. Does that make sense to anybody besides me? Anybody got their hand in the air? And a a comment was asked on the winning ways, so while we're waiting for the next hand, let's do that. I I don't disagree with your comment, a lot of correlation. uh, That thought came several years ago to, I don't know, where it came through the board or some and I happen to be chairman of Recruit, Promote, Maintain. And that, they thought that was a good place to put it at that point. But a lot of the things that we took, uh, gathered at that, uh, although we put them on a website and in the, the direction, some of those things actually perhaps sh- and should have gone to one of the other committees of, of, you know, this is something that has worked for this group that maybe, I don't know, uh, some other act, uh, committee, and I, I'm not coming up with an explanation or uh, ex- something to mention to you, but come go to them directly rather than just getting published. And, that, and our, our, our primary goal at that time was just to seek out success stories and make them available to people. We, we were not uh, tasked with, well, this should go to a uh, program or this should go to whatever question yeah. uh, where are these being published other than in direction i believe direction and on <coughs> and on the website on the website no okay. i don't believe they're sent out as a press release or anything else why don't we talk to american square dance magazine uh he's always looking for material to publish in that magazine and if you find it i'd be willing to help wordsmith it for the magazine I think that's a good suggestion. And and following on what Tom said, I think Winning Ways is a communication means. It, and, 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 and I think it's just like he says, uh, whoever is going to continue to try to work to breathe life in the PPI or maybe to be renamed PPI, uh, you know, that that's part of the process. But the Winning Ways is a communication, is a communication avenue. Other thoughts? Nobody is held hostage. If you're interested in it, just go to the website, and uh, and I can't even tell you which part of the menu to look on now. But if you click down through there, there's it. It it does specifically say winning ways. And 
Go ahead. Uh, Jimmy Aiken again. I'm just trying to get my mind around the different functions that the PPI is or might perform. Um, it seems, and I'm thinking in terms of a, of a, a panel that I was sitting in on uh, yesterday where uh, marketing was being discussed in terms of having the product, refining the product, and then selling the product to people. And it seems like in here we've talked about both altering the product so that you have perhaps an ABC program instead of the full Basic to Plus program. That's tailoring the product to, that you're going to then try to sell. We've talked about how do you sell it, the outreach part. And we've talked about some of the mechanics, like how do you get a haul, you know, which is kind of the physical structure of putting on an event uh, or uh, choreographing an evening, as Bob said. And um, I'm just trying to think systematically in terms of what are – what's the core function? What does PPI do or need to do yeah. with respect to those different areas and which areas are covered elsewhere? To me, part of the core function is what I said earlier is to make it clear to our membership and outside of our membership that Caller Lab is just not about perpetuating the current programs, but it's about perpetuating, perpetuating the square dance activity. And so the PPI, in its broadest sense, is meant to encourage people to think outside of the box in anything, large or small, that will help grow the business. And the other aspect, then, is the communication aspect. Can we learn about it so that we can, we can communicate it outward, we can uh, uh, provide it to committees that, to work on these things? This, this group or the, the, this initiative is not intended to find the one great truth, if you will, but it's, it's, it's meant to be an avenue for us to discover what might be the answer or answers, plural, uh, for the future of square dancing. But we think the answers are out there in what people are doing, not in what we know and tell people what to do. Okay. If, if there are already people via winning ways and recruit, promote, maintain, or whatever that are handling the marketing side of it, selling a, the product, why would uh, the PPI want to continue doing that? What, well, I'm just trying to understand the value sure. there. It could be that um, each new product you produce needs its own marketing effort. Well, there's no – and I'm, we're going to go over to Bob here. There's no uh, – it come, comes back to the judgment thing. Uh, I, I think you're only going to find out what's successful by what sort of has the grassroots, grassroots to pick up and go. I don't think it's a matter of we're going to say, okay, do this, do this, do this. I, I think Caller Lab personally has tried too often to say do this, do this, do this, and it's time to, to acknowledge that that's not, that's not really the best way to bring creativity out of the activity. Bob Riggs, Colorado. Um, one of the things I think it's – really important to understand that the PPI is not a particular thing. It's an encouragement of our membership to go and create things, and it's a means to, or a means to communicate and report on what was done. So it's not saying this is a program or this is a way of doing things. It's a, it's a way of saying, Jimmy, in your community, go grow your business. If you find a formula that works, that enhances this activity, report to us. Let's share it with our membership. And so maybe others in other parts of the country can do a similar kind of thing, use a similar idea and grow it in their part of the world. And that's really all it is. You know, you talk about halls. Well, that's logistics. And if you're going to hold an event, you got to have one. Well, not necessarily. But <laughs> <laughs> there's a great meadow up near north of Fraser in Colorado. If, if before we go on to the next next uh, person right behind you, Don, or if you had another comment, uh, that's Meg behind you, right? Yeah. <laughs> but what I was going to say is that uh, if you think back to when Caller Lab years ago had a, had a robust experimental call program. And so you would be getting an experimental call to use for some period of time 
on a program. It didn't make it onto the program then. I think Spin Chain Exchange of Gears was one of those. It did not make it onto the program because somebody looked and said, it is good, you will use it. It made it onto the program because the people that experimented with it liked it. It took on a life and it was absorbed. So in a, in a sense, this isn't for Caller Lab to say, it is good, go do it. It's a matter of getting, finding out and trying to be part of the process to allow things to be known about so that if it gets a life, we'll find out. Don Thompson again. This uh, what came to comes to mind listening to this is maybe change the I and PPI to incubator. And it sounds like Winning Ways is the communicator, but this could be the incubator. Could be Meg. That's clever. Don't forget to say who you are and where you're from. Yes, Meg Ferguson from Saratoga, California. And regarding the name, I think it should be descriptive so people don't have to, you know, it's not something. Not something they say, huh, about? They have to <laughs> in, interpret and figure out what it is. But, you know, yeah. just say what it is, <laughs> um, like experimental or whatever. Um, the other question I had, I haven't looked at winning ways, I have to admit, for, I guess, a couple years online. And is it categorized in any way? No. Um, no, it, I, the la and I haven't looked at it recently myself, but the, the, the way it was categorized is in the order they came in. Yeah. It may be. Yeah, each, Meg, each one was sort of an anecdote without a whole lot of, of, of trying to put any, putting any uh, uh, structure around it. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm a librarian, so I like to categorize. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we were in, you're talking about, you know, gathering information, putting it on the web. Um, I was in another program yesterday on declining capabilities. They were talking about gathering information, putting it on the web. Um, winning Ways is already there. Couldn't you just uh, have the person who is submitting something have a little form for them to fill out um, uh, and a, a list of categories, and they would check um whether this is for PPI or whatever you want to name it, for, name it, or check that it's for declining capabilities, or um, they could check as many as they wanted and then have a section for declining capabilities, a section for um, PPI, and what other, ever, whatever other topics you would want, you know, like... Um, uh, publicity or something like that. Right. And the person right. who submits the information would be doing the work of categorizing it. You wouldn't have to categorize it. Somebody, you'd have to have a webmaster who would be able to, would have to, um, you know, send the information to the appropriate category and then people could do a search. I want to look up um, experimental programs, you know. And then they could just click on experimental programs and see what everybody else has written rather than have to go through everything chronologically. Great suggestions. Back of the room to Pam. Pam Class for Toronto. Um, I'm also, uh, I'm a library tech, but involved in the library world. And it was Barry and I that ran the session on declining capabilities yesterday after two years doing it as a birds of a feather. And I think this is getting into a much larger issue for Caller Lab, and it's something I think we should consider, and that is making available to people. That was why we were suggesting putting this stuff up on the web when we get these suggestions of people who how to cope with somebody in their group that's, that's having difficulties. The Winning Ways is just done, I was looking at it six, eight weeks ago, and it's still just as the date they came in and it's the, the, you click on the date and it takes you to the, to the story. Um, I mean, I'd be willing to, as chair of research and development and with library background, I'd be willing to help with some of the categorization. And, but I, I'd like to see something on our website with, and, and I think Cal's idea of putting things in as articles in American Square Dance, not just in the Color Lab Viewpoints article, but as a general article in American Square Dance. Because one of our biggest problems is we're hiding our best stuff. We're not publicizing what we do. We're not letting the general square dance world out there know what we're doing. They see Caller Lab as, ma you know, the average dancer sees Caller Lab as maintaining the lists. They don't yeah. see a lot of these other wonderful things yeah. that we're doing. And, and I think, like I say, it's getting into a much larger issue than what this was supposed to be. But 
I think it's something that, that should be considered and looked at. And, and if we want to grow the membership of Collar Lab, want to keep square dancing growing, we've got to communicate. Yeah. And, and like I say, I think Cal's idea of putting things in American Square, it's as a general article, maybe written by a Collar Lab member, certainly, and, and identified as a Collar Lab member, but not just in the Collar Lab viewpoint section. I'm glad that this session is being recorded because I applaud all of you for putting some really great stuff on the table. Okay, a couple other very quick ideas. We have a broadcast system for Color Lab. We don't know people don't reach directions. We, we know that. Would they read perhaps a broadcast with a little short paragraph of winning ways that went out to the broadcast system on email? Who knows? Uh, something else. We find somebody with a good idea. Twist the EC's arm enough to get him on the program next year so other people can sit there and listen to the good idea. We get them to come to the Caller Lab convention. We get good ideas. Great. Back to Bob again. Bob Riggs, Colorado. Um, a couple of things came to mind as we were talking there. Um, first of all, most callers are not writers. I know there are, you know, Cal does excellent writing, and there are others in this group that do excellent writing, and I work at it. Um, but I think part of the point that Tom was making earlier was how to gather the information and doing it through phone interviews or getting a little information through the email and, and trying to – you need somebody that's going to compile it that'll that'll put it together to get the English language, to get the written material, and then the ability to distribute it, organize it, all of those other things be come into play, whether it's the fact that you can't find what you want because it's not organized in the right categorization or it's not searchable or any of those kinds of things. I understand that totally. The first hurdle is getting it. The next hurdle is organizing it. And the third hurdle is distributing it. And if we look at it through those terms and that we need pieces of that puzzle, right. certainly getting it to our membership and getting it to the general world, i.e. things like the American Square Dance, that's all terrific. But understanding the steps you have to go through to get there is the, is the point I wanted to make. So what I'm getting out of this so far, just to sort of recap and get people to react to it, things that Meg and Pam and Bob and I'm sorry I forgot your name in the back. Jimmy and Cal, I mean, and others have spoken have all brought out is, you know, if, if you acknowledge that there's a hurdle to get the callers to put it in writing and send it in, that doesn't negate the good ideas of the form, the ability to check off the category, the category or all this other stuff. What it does say, it says you need to, you need to have this initiative have a home where there are volunteers who are willing to work on it to put that together and then when you know who to contact it may simply be that phone interview where the interviewer has that form so if you can't send it out and expect it to get it back you can walk somebody through the conversation and you can check this check that check that and by the time you're done you've got something that then can is now recording be moved along so so the, just the fact that you can't get a caller to write something is not an impediment if you've got the right information and the right volunteers to go get that anyway cal were you going to say something else or just run the run the microphone back or tom is going to say something while you're running the microphone back just you know, getting people to respond, I think, is 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 a big big hurdle. Uh, as as chairman of the mainstream committee, we we have we sent out three ballots, and all they had to do was put a check mark on it and email it back. We're getting less than fifty percent. I think Bob hit on it is is getting those people to even give us an inkling of something that's happening out there that we can even follow up on. I, that, that, that that first hurdle, although they're all big, that first hurdle seems to be the biggest one to me. Go ahead. Um, I had a question but also a suggestion. If you're having – I work for an organization that uses email as a development tool, and we found that if you just email something out once – it's frequently not enough to get a response. It's like, it, in a way, it's kind of like advertising. You know, the old s statement that people got to see an ad three times before they respond. If you're not getting the email response you want, you might try sending it multiple times. You know, you wait a, a week or a few days and send it again, 
and then when it's the last time you're going to send it out, you put in the subject line, last chance to respond. And you'd be surprised at, at how that improves your results. Um, my question is, it's also in terms of marketing, I'm trying to figure out, okay, I'm let's say I'm out there in uh, in the sticks, and I've just come up with something that really has improved the square dancing activity in my area. I've got new people. I've got more than I can shake a stick at, even though I'm in the sticks. Um, <laughs> I go to the Caller Lab website, and I want to report this so other people can benefit from it. How do I know whether I give it to PPI or Winning Ways? What is it What is it that, that y'all would handle that they wouldn't and vice versa? And how do I know that? Um, I need a clear input point. Otherwise, I may say, you know, this is too confusing. I don't know where to send this. I'll just wait and do it later and then never get around to it. Well, I think that that's something that we need to think about for clarity. I mean, uh, to me, it wouldn't matter. If, if, if Winning Ways is the thing that people clicked on said, I know what to do with this, as long as the information from Winning Ways comes into this process, you've got the information. If, if it uh, – if – PPI or whatever it gets called was was the single point. People knew what that was. It's going to get communicated out perhaps as a winning ways, but it still gets there. So I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't care as long as we figure out one way that's not confusing that will serve both people, both masters. Pam Clasper, all you really need is something um, fairly prominent or somewhere near the home page, easy to get to on the website, basically saying – have you tried something different? Have a good idea? Anything? Send it here, and just click to one place, yep. and that could be a clearinghouse for everything. And then we will have the mechanism to determine where it goes and stuff. But for the person submitting, you want to make it as easy as possible, and like I say, as fairly prominent as possible. Do you think, Pam, that, that this particular what we're talking about today is something that your committee uh, should be or could be interested in, or do you think it belongs somewhere else? I would certainly be willing to help. At the moment, by and large, except for some help with Clark over the survey that we did, I'm pretty much a committee of one. I've get, had zero response from anybody. So you need some volunteers. So <laughs> if I could get – yeah, I mean, because this idea – I mean, when we talk about, you know, phoning somebody and interviewing and, and then collating the data, I mean, I, I agree with Bob. Um, you know, if you can phone and have a chat with them, you can often get more information out of them. Um, I would suggest that we, if, if people are going to do this regularly, that we try and get maybe a little tape recorder for them so that they can record the conversation so they can write it down. Because in these kinds of things, you often want anecdotes rather than just ticking boxes, you know. Right. But, um, you know, we could work on the mechanism. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I would certainly be willing to to, to get involved and, and help with this and, and do what I can because I think, like I say, because Barry and I have this particular interest in the declining capabilities organization. We've already got, we've talked to Michelle Jacobs a bit, or Michelle McCarty, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked to Michelle, and, and I plan to talk to her again today because she was at our meeting, and of course with the Handy Capable, they've done a bunch of sort of stuff of here's some ideas to help and things like that. I mean, so we're all collectively in Caller Lab coming up with good ideas for dealing with a variety of, right. of situations in dance, a, a variety of situations to encourage dance, to encourage people to continue dancing, to encourage new dancers. There should be one simple clearinghouse. If we get one simple clearinghouse for all that information and make it easy for people to get to. I mean, the Caller Lab website, I mean, I, I am very familiar with the internet. I use it constantly. I do research for network television news, so I'm all over the web, all over the place, and I'm very comfortable using it. But a lot of people are not, and we have to make it as easy as possible for them to find this information. You know, search boxes, I mean, some of them drive me crazy because I can use a search string five miles long and be very precise. Other people cannot do that. You don't want to make it difficult. You've got to make it easy for them to get the information, and we want to get it out there. And we want to get out to non-Caller Lab members, too, because then, you know, we have somewhere on it that this came through Caller Lab. It can, it can be a sort of an almost an advertising tool for Caller Lab itself as well. Yeah. Press release and Cal's idea of articles in the American Square Dance are, are a couple of good ways to get outside the organization, and I, I, I certainly resonate with that we need one clearinghouse. Um, sorry to send you all the way back there again, Cal, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice how I kept talking while I was walking forward and then I told him to go back? <laughs> yes, he said he wanted exercise. <laughs> something that uh, may be something that a piece of software that could 
play a useful role here potentially in terms of organizing this information? Because if you have good ideas, you don't want them to just get lost, like which is what happens if you have, say, a reverse chronological listing of ideas or a forward chronological listing of ideas. Um, you you want to be able to categorize stuff, and a piece of software or kind of software that has been very successful doing that recently is a wiki. Um, do, you want to, do you want to spell that? <laughs> W-I-K-I. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, the, the largest and most successful encyclopedia on Earth right now is Wikipedia, right. which runs this kind of software. It is – people can add to it, contribute to it. There's – there are problems with it, but it has an accuracy rating that is comparable to the Encyclopedia Britannica. And it's very useful – as a way of categorizing and permanently storing information so that people can find it when they want it. Um, publishing stuff in, in American Square Dance is great. That, though, is a periodical. And so it, the idea will be there. It'll go by people. Some of them will use it. But unless you save a stack of them and go through your stack regularly, you're not going to be encountering that information again when you need it or be able to find it easily. Putting it in a wiki might, and that might be the kind of one-stop organizational tool that could serve as a springboard for putting the information in other venues. So just a thought in terms of how you might want to accomplish the storage and organization mechanically. Great. Pam Clasper, um, our webmaster, uh, Patty Green, is – She's. I mean, Barry's been working with her. He's – uh, chair of the challenge committee and they've been working on an open forum and and she's very open to all kinds of these things and and things like that i mean basically what you really want is something like a wiki because you want something searchable and um so yeah so she's and categorizing and i think um what cal was getting at correct me if i'm wrong not necessarily using american square dance as a way to make sure everybody has the information but in a sense as a promotional tool to to, to advertise what we're doing and then each article will send people to the website where they can get everything that was my understanding of what cal was saying yeah for those of us that use Max, a wiki is a widget. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I hope the people listening to they this can edit, They can edit that out of the tape. No, no. We should leave it in there. Any, this has been a, a tremendous uh, – you never know what to expect when you go into an open forum. Uh, this has been a tremendous session, not in that we've discussed all these ways that are growing the activity, but we've talked about how to grow this particular initiative so it will help grow the activity. And so our record, our minutes of this meeting, if you will, are the fact that it's being recorded, which is terrific. Um, does anybody else have any any other thoughts on this topic that they want to bring up, or we can actually ring this thing down a little bit early? Tom, do you have any final comments on it i just want to thank everybody that's here for taking the initiative to come and share your ideas uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes he said it was either become here or stay in the incubator but you know the incubator might have been a little warmer than some of these halls are <laughs> but seriously i you know I, this has been one of my pets for several years, although maybe I haven't gotten involved as much as recently as I should, but I'm always looking for ideas to, that I can share with our people back home. And if nothing else, you know, if we take a piece of this one and a piece of that one and a piece of this one and put them all together, what maybe totally worked for them may not work totally for us, but if we take a piece and an idea, think outside the box, plant those seeds. They may not germinate today, but Next week, they might. Got a hand in the air. Mike Hall from Ohio. Um, I happen to be on one of Tom's email lists, or two of them, or three of them. I don't know which. And uh, just to, if you're not on his list, periodically I get stuff that he forwards to us, and he forwards it to a variety of people that, will come to me and say, what did Tom mean by this? Or what does this mean? And I think this, we're, you've been, these little ideas that Cal talked about putting it in American, Mag or American Square Dance Magazine, if it generates a question to the callers from 
the general populace, our, our product or our customers, um, maybe we've won a little bit. Okay. Um, how you know if you can get that new dancer that that when we pass them the magazine, the American Square Dance magazine, and, and you give it to them as a new dancer, and they read it and read this article in there and say, "Well, how can I help?" Uh, might be a you know something. Thank you, Mike. I wasn't. I I was planting seeds, and I I'm not the greatest writer in the world. But if I can plant a seed and make those people start asking questions, that's a big positive. One of our, our problems that I see over the years is we had all kinds of publications, all kinds of ideas, all kinds of articles that we used to get in American Square Dance Magazine and Square Dance Magazine. Uh, I've got a bookshelf full of books. Uh, most of them are now out of print. The material that we have available for any new person or club or organization is fading fast. And we seem to need some way to turn this around. The web's a good way to do it. But to get it on the web, you're going to have to be organized and you're going to have to have a webmaster that understands how to get things up on the search engines. And then once we can do that, we can do a lot with it. But one of the critical issues to me is the fact that choreography is being lost, ideas are being lost, uh, all the articles. I would love to take all the articles in American Square Dance Magazine and Square Dance Magazine and publish them on the web because I think it would be valuable. I read things in there and you know, we're going through right now. Thing, article after article after article, I can say, this still applies now. This still applies now. Things don't change. I was telling the uh, um, the marketing committee the fact that uh, we, we have the same problems today we had 50 years ago today. So, Cal, that's a great reminder that we tend not to learn from our history. Uh, it's also a great reminder that some of our new initiatives, new experiments, new winning ways are actually things that are in our historical record that we've forgotten about. So when we think about this idea here, uh, what are people doing today to experiment in any way possible may only be half of it. The other half of it is what did we know that we've forgotten? That if we only looked at it again might be the answer. So that, that's another uh, I think key input for us to think about. I, I, just to in, in, in expand upon what he said, what it might have worked five years ago maybe didn't work last year, but next year it may very well work. You know, that's that. I don't know what you call it, some cycle of some sort. But it uh, and and we've all seen it. And and I think one of our major problem, maybe not the biggest, but one of our major problems is too many of our dancers today say, we tried that yesterday or last year or two years ago, whatever. It didn't work then. Why is it going to work now? We just have to, to revisit those things, maybe tweak them, maybe think a little further outside that box. But there are so many of those ideas that we can adapt to our current picture. So I'm, I'm getting a, a sort of a closing sense of if what all the ideas that came up in this room today from this group, uh, if we can figure out how to begin to execute, implement, to bring that into being, you might find that this is where the revival of Square Dance started, right here in this room today. Great ideas, people. Anybody else for a last comment? Thank you for attending. <laughs>